Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Bob. And we are almost done with the tail of this RV-14 aircraft. So in this video, hopefully, we are going to finish closing out the tail section of it. And then we'll be able to do some test fitting with all the other stuff that we've built for the airplane so far. So last couple things to do. We've got this deck that needs to go on back here aft. Uh, we've got some holes to final drill uh, once we line up the vertical stabilizer in the tail section and some other holes to final drill. And then it's just a matter of putting the top side skins on and then riveting the top skin on top of that. So that's what's coming up in this video. I'll get busy doing all of that and you guys can follow along. The first step in this part of the build is to assemble all the components for the aft deck assembly. In addition to the deck plate itself, the assembly consists of a doubler plate, this rear piece of deck angle, a support angle for the horizontal stabilizer attach bar, and this frame for the aft fuselage. So at this point, I clico all of these components together, and then clico the assembly itself to the tail. I have to say, it's pretty impressive how well everything fits together. It fits like a glove back here. The next step calls for match drilling holes through the horizontal stabilizer support angle using the attach bars as a guide. So with the assembly clicoed in place, the two parts are clamped together and then drilled. Additionally, holes get match drilled through the aft support angle to match the holes in the rear bulkhead. The outer two holes back here will eventually be upsized for the bolts which will actually attach the vertical stabilizer to the tail. So with all that done, now it's just time to rivet the assembly to the tail. Most of the rivets back here can be set using the pneumatic rivet squeezer. So I first do as many of those as possible. There's a few tricky angles back here and I had to change out the yokes a couple of times. But in the end I was able to get almost everything done back here with the squeezer. For those that I couldn't, I simply used the rivet gun with an extension on it and a bucking bar on the inside. Alright, so I'm setting the last couple rivets back here in the tail of the airplane. Um, and as you can see, the rivet gun, you just can't get the head of the rivet gun on the back side of that rivet. It's just too close to the edge and all this stuff gets in your way. So I was racking my brain trying to figure out, you know, how I could get into that. You know, I'm looking at all the other rivet sets that I've got, you know, extensions and, and all that stuff. The problem is these are all made for round head rivets. So I don't have one that has a flat head on it. Then I remembered that on the C-frame, the bottom of the C-frame, which is what holds the rivet set in the bottom of that, that's exactly like the bottom of these guys. So that goes right into my rivet gun. So now all I have to do is just take a little flat set. We'll pop that on the end of that. And then I can stick this in the rivet gun, use it as an extension. So if you were on the fence a little bit about, you know, do you want to go with the C frame or do you want to go with the DRDT? The one nice thing that I have found about C frame is obviously this is going to save me a little bit. Also, when you're riveting into some tight spots where you can't get in there, you can also use the top of it put a rivet set in the bottom as well, and you can use that, put your rivet gun right on the top of that, use that as an extension. So that's also pretty handy. So for me, I like the C-frame. Uh, the DRDT is a little bit quieter, um, but as far as production of results, um, I find all the, all the rivets, all the dimples that I set with that to be completely consistent. I know pe some people say the DRDT produces a more consistent result, and that's why they like it. But with this, I mean, you hit it the first time, it starts to make the dent. The next time you hit it, either the second or third time, 
uh, there's that tone change and basically it's compressed the metal as much as it's going to compress and the dimple's set. And then if you look at all the dimples, they all look the same. So I don't know. It's cheaper. It's a lot lighter, easier to store. So I went with that and <laughs> today it's going to save me uh, trying to set this rivet. So there you go. Tip. With all the rivets now set, the last step for the aft deck is to simply pull a few of the system's wires through and secure them back here for now. And with that, the aft deck is done. All right, well that completes riveting the aft deck in place. That was a good little challenge of your riveting skills. Um, had to do a lot of different kind of riveting in there, especially when it came to the rivet gun. Um, just some really hard to reach places, um, both with the bucking bar as well as the rivet gun. But uh, all came out well. So that's all done. Got this attached there for the trim tab motor. These wires are run through, so all the system's wiring is done. This is all attached. Uh, the next step now is we're going to attach the vertical stabilizer here on the back, and we'll match drill some holes for that. Uh, and then once that's done, then it's just a matter of the, uh, the side skins up here on the top on each side, and then one long strip across the top. Almost done. Cool. So the next step in the plans calls for attaching the vertical stabilizer back here to final drill some holes, which are gonna run through the spar of the vertical stabilizer, and then also back into these plates back here, these doublers that are in the back. Um, so gonna do that. It's kind of exciting because for the first time, we're sticking the tail onto the tail, <laughs> which is pretty cool because, you know, it's starting to look like an airplane. All right, so I'll get busy doing that. Here we go. Using the bolts in the lower half of the aft bulkhead, as well as a Clico in this center hole that I match drilled through the aft support angle, I'll be able to attach the vertical stabilizer to the aft fuselage back here. I'm doing this in order to final size the outer two holes in the aft bulkhead to the holes in the vertical stabilizer itself. These are going to be upsized to fit A and 3 bolts, which will attach the top of the vertical stabilizer back here. Alright, so we've got the four bolts in the bottom down here, and this one's clecoed, so the next step is to match drill and upsize these two holes right here to number 12 so that later on in the final assembly, bolts will go through there. But noted in the plans, it's very important that these two bolt holes are put in perpendicular to this spar. So I'll try to be real careful about getting that lined up nice and perpendicular. So I'm using the Clecos back here as a guide to line things up vertically, and then my eyes looking down to line up horizontally as I carefully upsize the holes. Well, I don't feel any play in the hole at all, so I think they came out pretty good. All right, time to put the uh, rest of the skins on. That was nerve wracking. <laughs> all right. So moving on to the top side skins. The first step, of course, is clecoing the skin. And here I'm starting with the left skin.
With that in place, I begin setting all the rivets. I start by setting the rivets that run down the longerons. As usual, I've got some tape on holes that don't get rivets yet, and also a couple of holes that get longer rivets than the three and a half rivets that are used for most of the skin. I found that by changing the position of the tail throughout the process, it's possible to reach both sides and set all of the rivets, and then set the rivets that follow the curve of each bulkhead. All right, well that's got the uh, top side skin on for one side. Uh, so now I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side and then we'll lay the top skin in there and then this thing is done. Um, yeah, a little bit of a tough reach on some of those. Uh, you kind of saw a couple different techniques for getting in there, but uh, it can be done by one person. The top skin here, that may be a little tough. Uh, I know I can reach up to here from the back side and I can reach a little bit from the front to the back, but I uh, might need a little help. Might have to crawl inside that thing to do that. We'll see how that goes. But it's coming along nice, looks good. Uh, these all get left uh, unriveted for now. Those get sealed up when we do the big join with the uh, main fuselage section once that's done. So moving on. With the left side done, I'm moving on to repeat the process for the right skin. I found, especially because there's less space to reach in the back uh, with that left skin already on, that it's actually easier to set the rivets in the launcher on with the fuselage sitting down here on the ground. and then move it back up to finish off the bulkheads. In retrospect, it may have also been easier to do the left skin the same way. Next up, I assemble the components for the top skin, which include a doubler, a stiffener, and finally a rib running down the middle. For the doubler and the stiffener, it was easiest just to back rivet these to the top skin. But for the rib, as you see here, I had to improvise a little, as I'll explain. All right, so that completes putting together all the stuff for the top skin here. Um, so to get this done, mostly you can do with back riveting. Um, this guy went on pretty easy with back riveting. Um, and then there's a plate back here in the back that I was able to back rivet that. But in order to put this part on, you can't get the back rivet head down in there because this lip hangs over there. So the only way to get in there is like I did with a rivet gun. Um, and in order to make that happen, really need this kind of stable on its side. So as you saw there, what I did is uh, just basically took this, um, put some cloth down here to kind of keep from scratching the, uh, the finish here on this, but then basically just laid this down on its side and let this lip kind of hang right there on the table. And then just uh, took a board, again with some uh, cloth on it on the back side, and just clamped the bottom half of this right against the table. Um, and that actually worked out really well because it made a nice stable platform for me to get the rivet gun on one side and the bucking bar on the other side. And uh, all the rivets came out really nice. So that part is complete. The next step is to take this and attach it to the top of the aft fuselage. All right, last piece of the tail. Put this on the top and <laughs> she's all done.
So once I get the top skin Clecoed, I move around to start riveting. I work my way from the front of the fuselage, going in as far as I can comfortably reach on both sides. While I could actually reach in in the aft end on my own, the instructions say to start from the front and work your way back. So, it's time for me to crawl into the tail. I got my son to come out and help me once again, uh, lending me a hand. He bucks with the rivet gun on the outside while I contort myself to work the bucking bar from the inside. And once again, while I could have stopped with him assisting me after the middle is done, uh, and done the aft part on my own just by reaching in the back, since I was already in there and the rivets actually come out much more consistent with two people, I just opted to stay in pretzel mode a little bit longer and set them off. Well, there it is at long last. The tail of the airplane is complete. All the skins riveted together. The whole tail assembly is done. I've got all the other components, stabilizers, rudders, elevator, all that stuff. Um, that's all done as well. Uh, the only thing really left in the plans as it relates to the aft fuselage build of this kit is some test fitting with that stuff um, and then some, uh, some drilling and adjusting to line everything up. So that's still to go on this thing. But uh, overall, the tail is done. I'm really happy, really excited about that because um, the wings have shipped. They're on their way here. So um, <laughs> I needed to kind of get things done here so I could get things put away so that I had some room to open those crates and start working on the wing kit. So excited about that. But overall, really happy with the way everything's coming out. Um, the tail looks great, it's huge. Um, can't wait to see what it's gonna look like with the fuselage attached to that. So now I just need to make some space in here to bring the wings in and start working on those. So that's exciting. If you're working on something like this, let me know in the comments as well on that. Also, if you get a minute, just drop in the comments, um, just to give me a little bit of a flavor for who's watching these videos. Tell me a little bit about yourself as far as, you know, are you a pilot? Are you not a pilot? Uh, kind of where are you in your process as far as your certification, private pilot, commercial, ATP, that kind of stuff. Are you building something? Have you built something? Um, and if so, what? Um, and are you just watching this because you're thinking about building something? So just kind of curious as to who's out there watching and uh, what, you, what your backgrounds are like. So just drop something quick in the comments when you get a chance. Appreciate that. I just can't believe it's done. That's just cool. All right, well, once again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying all of it. Be sure to give us a like if you like what you're seeing. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see you on the next video.